Hello everybody, welcome to Planet FPL, the world where everything revolves around Euro 2020. My name's Serge. And my name is James. There are those days when we pod where I do wake up and I think, you know what, it's a bit of a light day today, I don't really know what we're going to talk about. How do we ever, we always manage to blag 30 to 40 minutes, even when we don't have much to talk about. And today feels like one of those days. <laughs> is that real or not? Nah, it's not real. Of course it's not real. Of course it's not real. Um, yeah. I mean, James was out of the bevies. I was at home last night, so um, I'm fairly fresh. But let's just make it a short one. We're in the final. Thank you very much. Ciao for now. It's coming home. End podcast. Cue music, please, man, child. Simples. How are we feeling? Uh, I think... Uh, I'm not sure if I am more positive on yesterday's performance than... Um, the majority of people. I think we thoroughly deserve to win. Yes. Um, when the opposition goalkeeper is their man of the match. Yes. And possibly, possibly man the man of the match, match yeah. uh, other than Raheem Sterling was doing pits all yeah, game. I think Raheem, to have that fitness in the last 10 minutes and and still be running, I thought was incredible. So Kasper Schmeichel, though, to be uh, their man of the match says it all, really. And... Um, I was looking through the England team this morning, reflecting on it, thinking who who was bad. A pick Pickford, still a bit flaky, but apart from that, who was but like everyone had to and did work their bollocks off yesterday. A game that we spoke yesterday about saying in the squad who's come in at any point and kind of let the team down. There were certain things I was unhappy with Rice and Phillips during the game, but I don't think they played particularly badly. No. Um, what should if you could describe last night in one word or your emotion now? How'd you do it? Excited, relieved. Yesterday was huge relief because uh, yeah, now we're in the final. I think it's as far as we've got in fifty-five years. Anything now is a bonus, but now it's yeah, one-game shootout, and um, the team are confident. I think it was nerves and relief. It was the atmosphere at the end that actually got goosebumps going finally when the, the, they were singing and dancing the players were happy and I was like wow okay this atmosphere it probably uh, I, I don't know about uh, money's a lot of money but I'd be like 500 quid to feel that atmosphere it's, it's kind of almost wish I was there type thing regardless of the cost it felt goosebumpy and uh yeah I'm hoping now the players can get their heads together and get ready for Sunday but so much with the game uh, mirrored certain things we've seen from England before, but um, also, yeah, I just thought man to man, it was a very good performance. I saw quite Mason Mount getting a bit of stick. I thought he played really well. Have you seen the video after the game of Mason Mount giving his shirt to a young girl? No. Mate, if you're an England fan and you watch that and you don't well up, something's wrong with you. Yeah. But Sensational. I, I thought he played really well. I yeah, thought he great. put an absolute shift in. Um, Rice and Phillips had a, a torrid time in the second half of the first half yeah, after our initial 10-15 minutes but <clears throat> then they got it together and um, I always watch Ricey with an extra microscope because of the West Ham connection and he, he it was good that he came off after the get after 90 minutes because he him and Maguire had a pre match fitness test didn't they so Did I, they? yeah I thought I, I heard Maguire and Rice they were likely to play but it was like get him off now because they'd had to cover a lot of ground I saw another video yesterday before the game it's a, uh, from Kane's goal against Germany and it's a, a video, a oh, brilliant Rice video cramp. of Declan yeah, Rice that's getting been cramped. Around for yeah. a little while. I saw it for but the first time yesterday. He, he He's loving it because, yeah, even when the final whistle went full kit straight on running, jumping on Kane after um, uh, a Raheem or whatever, the goals and all of it, they're just loving it. So to see them that enthused and they earned it yesterday, I think they earned that victory it wasn't the prettiest credit to Denmark firstly uh, yeah if we if we talk about Denmark first I think and we then should we can wax about, lyrical about England it started with before the game I was again mildly concerned about 60,000 people in Wembley and England taking the knee and they're going to be boos and I just irks me a lot the fact that the whole Danish team were clapping along with England whilst they were taking the knee and the fact that one of their players died in the first game and they got to where they were. And he's still they, alive. That, by yeah, the way. he is. He, but for 23 <laughs> minutes, was it 28 minutes? He was technically dead. No, I don't think it was that long. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm no, going to Google it I and just check. I, I, like I, I don't think it was long at all. Okay. 
I th- I thought it was uh, longer because um, Mwamba was like seventy something minutes. Mwamba wasn't it? was seventy two minutes. I think Ericsson um, was the first um, shock they give him who came back to life. I don't right. think it was long at all. Okay, I I've, I don't know why I'm, I was under the impression it was twenty something minutes. Regardless, they 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 are a credit to themselves, the nation, everything about it, and they put in a, a great performance yesterday for 60 65 minutes and then you could tell that they really ran out of gas unfortunately which is understandable um yeah Denmark have been an absolute joy in this tournament um for any Denmark listeners full credit to you you gave us a proper game of football and I think we knew it was going to be a really tough game and there were concerns ironically you talk about kind of the 65 70 minute mark I turned to a mate in the pub and I said uh, literally that 20 minutes to go I think just before Dolberg come off and he'd had a shot and I I said I'm way more concerned now than I was in the Germany game Mm. way more I I felt like they were beginning to kind of turn a screw the game kind of flip-flopped in many ways like England started like a train in the first 10 minutes then Denmark had a spell then after Denmark scored England had a spell again and there was a spell kind of midpoint second half where I thought I'm not sure if England might be running out of ideas here a little bit. And Denmark looked so threatening when they got the ball into the front players. I thought Braithwaite had a great game for Denmark, by the way. Mm. Uh, But actually, from the point that I said that, they looked shot physically. They did. They really did. Um, But that's credit to England off the ball. I think there's a number of reasons for that. I mean, it didn't help them desperately, unfortunately, they played in Baku at the weekend. You know, if people want to come in and say, oh, England have been lucky with the travelling and stuff. Yeah, we know. We don't care, by the way. But I don't think that helped Denmark. They also, they'd obviously made a lot of changes. I think it, there's two things to that. One, it kind of stemmed a little bit the momentum they had, taking off people like Dolberg and Damsgaard. Damsgaard, I think we kind of knew he's a 60-minute player at the moment, but he's got super talent. I think mm. we were all like, yeah, you can go off, mate. That, that's absolutely fine. The quality beyond the first 11 is a squad depth. You look at England's bench and Denmark's bench, there's obviously a, a jump there. 1 to 11, there's not huge differences between the team. Probably England stronger in every area, but Denmark with their high press, their intensity, physicality, and their quality. When they counter attacked, they had me worried. They moved For the, the ball first very time quickly, in the tournament, they had me really quickly. worried. I love the passing triangles they had and the speed they could get it back to front neatly organized you're like how i felt a period especially in the first half how we, we need to get the ball off these because <laughs> they were keeping the ball so well i was like we need to but we were get trying to press and not able to and it's something we've been quite good at but having said that we've seen it in in other games where um england have started well and then seeded possession for a period in the first half and then come in strong in the second half and it's again is the, the same blueprint it's start well aggressive then take a foot off the gas a little bit and feel it out and then hit it again when we figured out what's happening. And this time round, though, that period where we took the foot off the gas, some other games, especially like Ukraine, we could just knock it around and keep ball. Here, we couldn't because when they got it, they were actually hurting us. And so that was very difficult. I think Rice and Phillips had a tough game because the midfield of Denmark moved the ball so well and fast and, and what have you. But then on the on the flip side, uh, some of their big outlets like Mele. Uh, I thought Carl Walker did a phenomenal job on him. It started straight up with, there was one challenge where he physically gave him a good shoulder barge and that set the tone for the rest of it. And Carl Walker was like, you sh- you sh- you're not going to get past me. You're not going to outpace me. That's it. And um, that set the tone for quite a lot of it. They didn't have that outlet. Um, so some of the threat that, that Denmark could have had was nullified. But overall, just, yeah, very happy with the performance. And um, you don't expect easy games in semi-finals. But had our finishing been a bit better or had Kasper Schmeichel not had a fucking heroic game in goal, we could have won 3 4 1 by the end of it, you know? So. How was your feeling about your 3 0 prediction when Damsgaard scored? <laughs> yeah, to be honest with you, <laughs> uh, look, you can spin it two ways. Um, and we'll talk about some of the other things that people are spinning. Like, there's a lot of, there'll always be a bit of shade thrown at England in terms of you didn't have to travel. At the moment, I feel like it's you diving bastards. Um, it's a set piece goal that Pickford should have saved. It was very well taken free kick, but it wasn't in the top corner. No, I, it wasn't in the top corner. You agree, but slightly it was th- better positioning. I don't want to take anything away from Damsgaard. There was some also, serious I mean, dip trajectory on that shot. Yeah, Pickford got caught by surprise and so on. Um, 
I feel like Cash Schmeichel might have saved it though. I agree. Yeah. So if if the only goal we've conceded is a set piece goal and the keeper could have should have done better, I'll take that. Um, but I felt calm to be honest with you. And even going into 65, 70 minutes, I told I said to my wife sitting next to me, um, we scored our goals against Germany in the 74th and 83rd minutes. Take it easy, it's fine. And I still felt that confidence going into 70, 80 minutes. We scored our goals late against Germany. We just stayed calm. And the same thing happened here where, okay, we had to go to extra time, but we stayed calm. Yeah, I think the, the, the bit that got me where I was... a I, I like you, although I was more worried last night than the Germany game, I wasn't as tense last night as I was mm. for the Germany game. I think that was, that, the, like I said many times, that psychological barrier of beating a big nation consciously. Can we do it? Can we do it? Whereas I think going into last night, you're kind of already consciously aware we can do it. Yeah. We've shown now we can do it. The bit that like worried me was we were piling on the pressure at the end of 90 minutes. Mm. And there was a worry for me that if we didn't score in that period, was extra time going to become a slog? It often happens. You watch 90 minutes and an extra time becomes the kind of panic. No one wants to make the mistake that loses the game. But I thought in the first 15 minutes of the second um, of extra time, England were phenomenal. I would put a large part of that down to uh, the bench. England have the best squad in the, the tournament. If you look 1 to 26, maybe... The depth on the bench. Definitely Att- attacking depth, depth yeah. definitely. Attacking for sure, yeah. Defensively, yeah, we've got a, a bit of issues. But with Foden and Grealish and stuff on the ball, and I know Grealish then did come off, um, they, they carried real energy and directness. And Sterling still was probably a big impetus. Because when he switched to the right, because when Grealish came on, I felt he had a period where he was anonymous and then came back into the game and then finished it so He strong. actually ran even more directly when he... Is off the right, which we spoke. Yeah. I prefer him out there yeah, personally, yeah, yeah. Um, because I just think he has that kind of incentive to want to take people on yeah. the outside. Whereas now, when he's mm. commonly on the left, he wants to come in. He had a couple of really good shooting opportunities. One really early in the game, which was tame, and it was one actually in the first half extra time that Greedish laid back to him, and he's fucking blazed the thing. But his performance was outstanding. But ironically, I would have taken him off, and I'm not saying he wasn't England's best player. I, I totally agree. My gripe last night was get them fucking subs on the pitch because these lot are knackered. What I didn't see coming was exactly what you said. Sterling seems to get stronger. Yeah, yeah. Um, adrenaline and the crowd and everything plays a big part in it. Um, so yeah, very, very, very happy. Look, Sunday is going to come around. We're going to blink and it's going to be Sunday. Three days, four days is a very quick turnaround. Um, but we're there now. I think just getting to the final... Um, the expectation is probably Italy are going to win. They're the favourites, but home ground and so on. I think it, it, we're definitely in with a shout. And uh, Kane has grown through the tournament. Yesterday, he was very, very good, dropping in deep, doing all, all the stuff that Kane does. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know why. I can understand why people doubt him. Oh, God. No, as in, I can understand why they were. Like, he's not in form. But then you... How do you get back out into form? By playing. You don't get into form on the training pitch, do you? So he played very well yesterday. Um, yeah, I, I think everything about it made me confident going into the final that we'll give a good account of ourselves and it's gonna, it's not going to be easy for Italy. Um, but physically, yeah, it was a tough game yesterday as well. In- England fans would have had a brief period in the first half last night knowing what us Tottenham fans have known for a long time is you want Kane on the end of Kane's passes. But that, where he's dropped off the front, we spoke yesterday about <clears throat> that space in behind Hoiber and Delaney. Do the centre-backs want to go with him? No, he's got to drop in there. And the, the control and the pass for Saka for the equalising goal. Yeah. But he's before so that, if he doesn't, if he doesn't the, do it quickly as well, Saka's offside. The ball for the Sterling shot before that, I shouted goal. We all, I think we all did because there was only one place he could have kicked it, Sterling, that wouldn't have gone in. And that was... Uh, I sat next to my nine-year-old. I was like, oh, t- uh, about two inches lower and that would have been his ghoulies, mate. <laughs> so fun, fun in games. But um, yeah, talking about England, I mean, we we thought formation-wise they would line up as they did with Saka and, and him dropping in. I thought he did well for the minutes he played, um, but it was tough, physically tough for him because big, strong players that he's coming up against and he, he's quite small, but he, he gave a good account of himself there as well. 
Um, I don't know if we'll take the same approach into Italy necessarily with Saka and maybe giving ourselves the flexibility of five. No, I mean, I suggested that I thought if we won, it would be Sancho in for Saka for Sunday. Um, Having thought about it more, it might be Grealish instead, actually, and actually put Sterling to the right. Might be what he ends up doing, I think. Because I think the, the space to exploit Italy in transition is definitely that channel on the ra- right rather than the other side it also means that I think Jack up against Di Lorenzo can kind of pin him back and he's not got to worry too much about going with him um, that said if England were to get doubled up on I think because of Carl Walker's recovery pace you'd kind of want it to be on that side rather than the left side so it's interesting there's a couple of different options to Southgate it's a good problem to have. Of course it is. I like the way that um, now, or well, yesterday's game, I felt like they were working in pairs in terms of Mount and Saka seemed to drift together. And then Luke Shaw and Raheem Sterling were working the left channel and then Mount would drift to the right with Saka, giving us options. Kane will drift wherever he wants to. Sterling will cut in. Yeah, good attacking options. Uh, very good performance. Tough game, as expected. we just got to put it behind us now and, and focus on Italy. The penalty. I thought, first instinct when I watched it, I thought it was a penalty. I thought he'd cut across him. Um, the way I, I said it before, I mean, even the Kane one prior, let's talk about the Kane one prior, I could see it given and I could see it not given. So I was like, if you've got two half penalties, then the half plus half equals one, right? So that's <laughs> <laughs> not sure about your logic there, mate. But yeah. I think that could have been the same, like yeah. actually if, if it had been given on Kane then again, it probably wouldn't have got overturned. There, yeah. It was actually one really early in the first half of extra time where Sterling's blitz past Mahaley and he gives him a full mm. arm push. Not enough to push him over. No. But actually in that circumstance, if he'd gone over, there's every chance he'd have got Contact a penalty then as well. penalty equals not overturned. I thought the second player coming in, the two number 24, I don't, um, was it Jensen? Jensen. I would say maybe. Um, was much more of a big physical contact, but the Sterling was going down at that point where he got completely taken down. Right, so the stop, stop, stop the bullshit. It's a fucking dive, right? No, I, <laughs> it's a fucking dive. But there was but, contact, though. Well, Small that, contact. Well, that's why but he took it. It didn't get overturned. The, the irony is, a lot of people have been raving about the officiating in this tournament, and rightly so for 90 95% of it the irony is last night that if it had been VAR in the Premier League they might have called that penalty off true I don't actually think that anybody wants that to be a penalty you'd be gutted if that was against well this you. is the thing whenever people call it out I always say flip it as, as easy as you can flip it in your head how would you feel if it went the other way you'd be gutted uh, gutted yes but contacts but uh... there's lazy challenges because they're they're tired they're knackered yeah yeah. there is if you look very closely the contact is actually knee to knee Mm. which is accidental but it mainly puts out kind of a a lazy lunge which doesn't look like it makes contact with stern there's an ever so slight clip of the knees not enough to make him go down and i think he's already going because he's he's waiting for that initiation of the contact is also unfortunately because of the laws of the game and the way games are officiated, it encourages players to go down. Yep. England have divers. Italy have divers. Denmark have divers. We saw Damsgaard pull out a brilliant one against Belgium that wasn't even close to contact with someone. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I'm you, not mean to compare the two the because is, he didn't get the decision. But When you're in the box doing what Sterling was doing, dribbling, you're almost looking to draw a foul to win a penalty. Have we seen him win loads like that? For so... Sterling? they're preparing themselves for right? as soon as he comes close to me I'm going to wait for the contact I'm going to go but they're, they're psychologically thinking right I'm, I've got to be ready to go down when the contact comes they're prepping themselves for it we talk about so, sometimes it's the rules that we should be mad with not the refereeing another example is uh, Harry Kane's uh, not Harry Kane Harry Maguire's yellow card for that el- elbow just felt like he's, he's, he was fucking raging Maguire wasn't he uh, and quite rightly I mean he's just jumped he's just jumped for the ball there I don't know uh, but the rule is right the yellow card is right it's a stupid rule this contact kind of thing with the with the penalties as well if there's contact can't be overruled is the rule we've got to be a bit more mad with the rules sometimes than the refereeing 
before anyone comes at me and starts going yada 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 about the penalty if you can find one incident in the last three years where I've moaned about an officiating decision against Tottenham please bring it up because I don't because I generally just accept this shit and on this occasion yeah. it went for us I can understand why Denmark fans are so upset and stuff and do I really want my player to do that no but I also know if it was the other way round. Their player's going to go down in the same way and yeah, try and initiate are. the contact and win the penalty as well. On this occasion, it went for England. Am I proud that Raheem Sterling went down like an Olympic fucking diver to get us a penalty that we missed, by the way, that ultimately got us to a major final when for so many years England have not been streetwise, etc. And yes, there are a run of things now that have gone for England in this tournament. Not least the fact that Harry Kane's at the worst fucking penalty of his life. Mm. I knew he was going to go that way. And the reason I knew he was going to go that way is because it's not his favourite penalty. And historically, Kane always goes the other way for big pressure penalties. And I, I just had it's an It's the inkling. way he puffed his cheeks out before he took well, it. He, he always does that anyway. I just, <laughs> I just had this instinct that yeah. he was going to go that way and he doesn't like taking his penalties that way, but you can't go the same way every fucking time. And it, the only reason he scored the rebound is because the penalty was so bad that mm. if it had been right in the corner, he's gone that side. Schmeichel's it's tipping it away or putting it round the post. It was so bad, it was in Schmeichel. And obviously, Schmeichel had a worldly performance. He's got a millisecond to react to what he's doing. And because it's in his body, he probably knows, I've got to hold this. Because wherever I save it, I can't, it's in my body, I can't push it out anywhere. Yep. And obviously, the, it, the whole moment of Kane taking the penalty to score in the rebound obviously happens in one second. It was like over about 10 seconds in all of our minds, I think. Because you have that fuck reaction and then you have, I know he's going to score. Yeah, and as soon as it bounced out of Schmeichel, we've got goal here. And that was it. If Schmeichel had saved the rebound, we definitely would not be in the final this morning. No. <laughs> You'd have gone, no, this is um, fated. Yeah, unbelievable. Uh, I, I'm probably less bullish that it was a dive dive, like Olympic, world's best Olympic dive. I don't know. It's not as, as bad oh, no, as he wouldn't I've get. No, he wouldn't get a gold medal for it, mate. He'd finish in but about eighth place. I think, yeah, it, it was soft. I would call it soft rather than a dive, probably. But, you know, this is this is where football is about opinions. The thing is, ultimately, did England deserve to win? Yes. It's worse when you win a game that you didn't deserve to through that. I think there's nobody from uh, Denmark or neutrals that would say England didn't deserve to win yesterday. Uh, there, were pe there were people that will counter that with because of the decision that's decided the game. But in terms of, I mean, that period, the last 20 minutes of normal time and the first 15 minutes of extra time, which is what, it was kind of a 40-minute period or so, including the added time. I mean, it's arguably the best thing we've produced in the tournament, actually, in the kind of real pressure moment. I love the intensity we played with in the first half of extra time. Foden came on, it looked like he'd been on the pitch all game, didn't it? Yeah. It's like, I'm in, I'm picking up pockets, I'm mm. off, I'm playing. Such a gorgeous player, Phil Foden. Jack Adam worried. He just draws people, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it's funny how everyone else made more of a deal about him being subbed on and subbed off than he himself and, and Southgate and the team. The, they know that it's a team effort here the XG is obviously looked mad because I think England was nearly free and Denmark was like half a goal or something well, probably not even that oh, so which is obviously, my prediction was right on XG but then. that's obviously <laughs> massively skewed Penalty. by yeah and the rebound yeah yeah <laughs> you, get, you only can score once but you get about one yeah. and a half but XG Sterling's that Sterling's first shot must be a, uh, the first one that Kasper Schmeichel saved must have and a high XG as well, as well yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah I'll give you a brilliant sh stat from last night though how many penalty area touches do you think England had? 10 or something, I don't know. 54. Wow. It's the highest recorded penalty area touches for a team in a European Championship mate, uh, match since they've gone back and recorded data, which goes back to 1980. The highest of any team in any game in a European Championship. Denmark had five. Okay, yeah. There we go. Cashwood Michael made uh, 10 saves, 9 saves during the game. The reason I know that is because I was so nervous before the game, I forgot to do much subs for the Euro fantasy. So I didn't bring in Schmeichel for Donnarumma. Did you not make changes? I didn't bring in my bench players. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was watching the build up and I was like, England, England, England. I completely, Dickhead. fantasy was so far out of my mind. I couldn't even tell well, what you. What I've learned to do, because I know a lot of people think, yeah. oh, I want to wait till the players warm up just in case someone gets injured in the warm up. Listen, if that happens, you're just so dead unlucky. I've learned to write teams in, go and do it. Yeah. When England are playing, because otherwise was, I'm going to forget uh, as well. It was 10 points overall for me. In the end, it made a difference of... Uh, it wasn't the biggest deal in the world, but still, it was frustrating because I had Damsgaard's uh, goal and I had Kasper Schmeichel's nine points sitting what there. What did you on the finish bench. on? Uh, right, 33. So I would have finished on 43. That's what I finished on was yeah. 43. Uh, yeah. I really can't remember what I went up to in the end. Um, Damsgaard's goal, uh, ironically. That's the player I should have captained, yeah, as you do. I obviously left the captaincy on Emerson, as I said I would. Um and obviously Kane missing and then scoring the rebound meant it was only obviously a four-pointer for him. I am up to, I'll tell you in a second. 500 and something maybe? Uh, 1,141. Ah, okay. okay, top 1K so is... Very difficult to make the gains now. Yeah, we'll speak about it a teams. little bit more tomorrow in terms of what we'll do for the final. But I, you, I think you go all in strategy, whichever team you fancy. Mm. Ideally, and probably just blanket defensive. I would want, if England are playing a back four, I think I'd want all five, probably is, is my original thinking to that. Did you, before we do some questions, if we yeah, can. Yeah, I'm going to pull up the, the questions as we speak. Did you know what happened in extra time With in Denmark the second half? Being ten, 10 men? Yeah, did you know? I don't know why they were down to 10 men, but I know they were 10 men. I'm assuming someone went off injured. Jensen went been, off injured in the half time. And they made extra all their time. subs, I'm assuming. If you're wondering why you're not getting experts tactical analysis on the game last night one I was so fucking engrossed in what was happening I can honestly promise you I did not even know till this morning that they were a man short oh this till this morning but they talked about it but obviously when you're in a pub or something they're commentary I I watched I I saw someone tweet about it and I went what and I went back and watched extra time this morning to kind of see when it had happened so I'm watching the first half is 11 is 11 the second half restarts I'm looking counting from kickoff one short commentators are going to mention this and it was so noisy where I was yeah, couldn't yeah. really hear the commentary yeah. and stuff hey fucking dickheads on ITV didn't mention it for 10 minutes one thing for me watching a TV that doesn't got the whole screen to go yeah. something's not yeah. right here you're in there this is why people say oh you know you get a better view on the TV no in a football stadium you can see shit like that which is quite important I would want to be informed I messaged um, the lads I was with I said did you any of you notice last night they went no Everyone was just so engrossed in what yeah, was happening. Yeah. So you remember that spell we had the ball for like two and a half minutes and it would it was like, Wow, we've killed the game so good here. Yeah, whatever well, fucking man short. Yeah, I know, day. I understand it. Well, I didn't know that last uh, night. Okay. I was thinking we're playing Olay yeah, football, yeah, yeah. not realising they was in trouble. Truth is, even with eleven, we'd still been all right Sa- the ball of that. Southgate made a massive call, obviously, to take Grealish off. And yes. you can I'm sure the reaction up and down the country from England fans was probably the same as what all ours was. What? Mm. And then you have that moment you go, trust Gareth, we've said yeah, this, trust yeah, Gareth, yeah. trust Gareth. But I really wasn't happy about it because we'd been so dominant in that extra time uh, first half period. I thought, just keep playing. Don't invite pressure. And we had silly things like Braithwaite had that kind of half effort, which Pickford had to, it wasn't going in any way, but he had to no. push it wide. Anything can happen from a corner or a set piece. You, we've got a dodgy penalty. A little bit of contact in the penalty area. Did they get a penalty? So I was a bit annoyed that we invited a little pre- bit of pressure because I didn't think it was necessary. However, the job got done. It's proven right again, actually. And I think credit to Jack as well, because by all accounts, he, he just understood and accepted it. Change of formation. He's not caused a fuss about yeah, it. It, it was obviously He came on and was, was very influential, and we know he is. He obviously felt he had to keep Sterling on the pitch, which I think was proven to be, even as I said, I would have taken him off just to get the freshness on there. But we got stronger. Southgate was proven to be correct. I even said to one of the lads, I'd consider taking Kane off. Mm-hmm. and going Foden false nine and having Sancho on to have another kind of quick breakaway oh, yeah. player. The thing is, when we had the out, what, what annoyed me more than the, the, the subbing of Grealish was in the lot, it was like eight minutes to go and when we were started going for the corner and just knocking it around, I was like... Yeah, if, it was too early. It was too early. Yeah. I was like, get a third because we had them on the ropes to get a third. I was like, if you try and play for it, if Denmark get one, we're going to penalties. If we get a third, good night, sweet dreams. So that that annoyed me a bit. It was too early to go for the corner. Um, but you know, let's. I'm not worried about that now. I, I just don't think it's worth dissecting too much. Do you feel the euphoria of it this morning? I started thinking about like, as a West Ham fan. Only once in my life has a team that I support in football, anyway, got to a final. That was obviously our FA Cup final. 
uh, the morning of the final is what I'm looking for. I'm looking forward to Sunday. The morning is it's the day of the final. Do I feel euphoria? No, uh, but that's my human nature. I also, I don't get too down when things are bad and I don't get too high when things are up. What I want to see is England build a legacy here. I want England to be a dominant force in football for the next 10 to 15 years with the, the youth of the squad and everything that we have. I want to see some empire building type shit here. I know that's probably a bad use of terminology because we conquered the world and we're pretty assholes at it, to be fair. But, you know, legacy building um, stuff here. We've got the ability now. I'm looking forward. Okay, World Cup, 18 months away. We've got a squad here that's phenomenally good and young. Let's go. Things like, I had to turn to my wife. I'd be like, that 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 Saka that's just come off. She's like, yeah, yeah, okay, he's 19. She's like, what? <laughs> you know, better than 17. 20, 18. 20, 18, sorry. No, 18, 18 yeah, now. Yeah. But 20, 21 year olds here, there, and everywhere. Legacy building stuff I want to see from England now. Super talents. But then we've seen, I mean, Deli Alley's a great case, right? Where he was kind of going to be the, the golden boy of English football four or five years ago. And he's, what, 25 now? And he's miles from the squad, right? You've got people like James Madison who ain't in the squad, would be ahead of Deli Alley. So these kids have got to keep their feet on the ground nothing's achieved yet and I think there's that there's that kind of in my mind is this is serious now this is about winning a game of football on Sunday mm. I felt more euphoric after beating Germany than I did yesterday and I think that's because the Germany game I'd built up in my mind that last 16 whether it was going to be Germany Portugal France was going to be so massive to get over that psychological hurdle and we did it we spoke about I mean, we're talking about England being in a major final for the first time in 55 years. The Germany game was the first time England had beat a major nation in 90 minutes in 55 years. So this team under Southgate has crossed many hurdles. There was the 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 penalty victory against Colombia. There's been the beating of the major nation in Germany. There's been the winning of a game in extra time, which mm -hmm. I don't think England have done since I want to say uh, maybe Belgium 1990 I think maybe I might have that wrong um, so it's another one cleared that that, that kind of we go to 90 minutes we're going to penalties basically or we, yeah. or we going out like we did to Croatia three yeah. years ago this team, team keeps crossing hurdles for the legacy and we should not be getting ahead of ourselves right because this is a 50-50 game on Sunday and Italy had a stronger team in my opinion it's a 50-50 game because it's at Wembley I mean if it was on a neutral venue you'd probably say 60-65% them but I think looking at the odds this morning even the bookies are going, they are basically going 50-50 on this so it's a real level game but to build the legacy you got to win the first one correct like Spain in correct. 08 had gone so long without a major trophy you have to win that first one first and if we do win on Sunday no one's suggesting we're going to win the World Cup and then we're going to win the next Euros. But I understand what you're saying, Serge, in terms of the possibility because of the age profile of the squad, etc. You know, if you can get more greater depth in kind of centre-back, central midfield and goalkeeper positions, then I mean, it's frighteningly exciting for England. It's not frightening. It is extremely exciting for England fans over the next three or four tournaments, I would say. Correct. So answer a few questions. Thank you so much for sending them in uh, on James's drunk tweet last night. Lovely, jubbly. <laughs> uh, we've answered a few of them. I'm going to try and um, keep it to the fun ones, James. I'm going to keep it light. Oh, hard. please do. Some are good, some are not. But Pinky Green <laughs> starts ham or chicken? Chicken. I'm going to go ham. I'm okay. going to get ham. Like a roast gammon. Did you do the video Lovely, at all? Lovely, tasty. Yeah, I did. Oh, good. I did. Uh, get a gammon. Uh, well, the chicken with gravy is good, but I think ham. I'm going to go ham. Um, especially if it's a roast or a sandwich or something like that. Definitely. Chicken. Here's one for you. Uh, Amma wants to know, is, is Rice and Phillips the right combination to go up against Barella and Verratti? Yeah, I kind of go back to my, my opinion on the best tactical structure for England to win that game on Sunday is, is my feeling is the same as what it was yesterday. The only difference might be, like I said, who plays. I think yesterday I was clearing my mind Sancho, but it might be a case of moving Sterling to the right, right for the game now, possibly as an alternative. Mm. But I think, yep, yeah, Spain gave us the blueprint on Tuesday. Phillips into Verratti, Mount into Jorginho. Rice has to mop up the space. We have to go and be aggressive. Yep. I think it could be a very untypical final. Mm. also can we kind of put the whole 
Although it, it def, England definitely have a better chance with the game being at Wembley. Let's not forget, last two European Championship finals with the host nation in the final. France lost to Portugal, weren't expected to. And in 2004, obviously Portugal lost to Greece. Yep. Those are your last two home nations in finals in the Euros. So mm. being at home don't guarantee shit. Uh, William uh, Calmeadow, why are people so negative about the soft penalty when the Denmark free kick for the goal was dubious as fuck, as he says? <laughs> yeah, it was. I mean, Shaw's holding him. It's one of them, I think, on those kind of free kicks on the edge. The yeah. referee's decided he wants to pick something out and it doesn't normally happen. If that had happened in the box, would he have given a penalty? Probably not. No. Uh, ben Miller, uh, how's the hangover, James? Better than it was after Germany. And actually better than it was after Saturday as well, in okay, all honesty. Fair play. Uh, what's the best England kit? Ben also asked the same question. What's oh, the best question. England kit from a major tournament? I will go with the home shirt from Italia 90. I think it's super iconic. Yeah, it is. I was going to go with just the 66 the classic. Basic, the Gascoigne shirt. Yeah, yeah. Gaza. And, but also the Lineker doing a shit on the pitch shirt as well. Oh, uh, yes, it was. It yeah, is. against it's the uh, Nick doing a shit on the pitch. It was against shirt. Republic of Ireland, wasn't it? I think. I <laughs> well, shout out to the lad I met last night, Peter, as well. Oh, it's still fucking weird. People go, you James from Planet FPL. That shit's so fucking weird. It happened in the pub last night. Shout out to Peter, good lad. I was also speaking to a lad outside who had a, uh, a shirt that was very similar. Uh, he's, I said, where did you get this shirt from? He said, the internet. I was like, yeah, great, mate, but what fucking <laughs> site? He had a shirt that was like that, the England home shirt from Italia 90, but it was all black. Okay. Everything was black. I was like, wow, what a shirt. That is fucking gorgeous. The other one I really liked, which I think was underrated, was Spurs, man. You know, we wear navy shorts for England. I like a navy blue away kit, actually. was I really liked the, the away shirt we had in Euro 2012. Yeah, you might remember Andy Carroll's goal against Sweden, Danny Welbeck's winner, Fear Walcott's equaliser. It was navy blue, kind of a, a light blue collar and stuff. I really liked that kit. That, I mean, that was just me. But yeah, England at home, Italia 90 for me is the iconic one. Okay, fair play. And David Seaman's goldie shirts from Euro 96. I mean, wear them on a night out. <laughs> Especially if it's a rave, yeah. That's fine. <laughs> That's the only place they're, they're, they're acceptable. You'd be tripping before you took anything looking at that. Josh wants to know, do you regret turning down those expensive tickets to the final now? Nah. Nah, me neither. No, nah. me neither. No, nah, anyone who's got them, good luck. You're blessed. Enjoy it. Sing your hearts out, whether you're English or Italian, and you're going. Sing your hearts mm. out. Make it a great atmosphere. No, I'm no really, regrets. and I have to be honest, and I can say this because my wife and kids don't listen to the pod. Not enjoying watching the games with them. The last couple I have, but I know I have to. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> There's so uh, we we did a James did a Patreon pod with his wife probably two, three weeks ago. Last week. Uh, last week, was it? Yeah, yeah. Wow, so recent. And she, she came with all the things she doesn't like about football and just the general conversation about life and stuff. And um, she obviously watches football with you and she's probably... Well, Does she, fuck? She, she's watched more football than my <laughs> wife has. She whinges so about something while I'm watching it. It was, it was funny as hell and a really, really good listen. I know a, a lot of our patrons really enjoyed it. So then obviously the questions came in the Q&A, am I going to do one with my wife? Now, it just wouldn't work because she's not very football oriented, doesn't really understand it, doesn't really care. Um, she's not also that funny. Plus your wife's but, a lovely woman and mine's a fucking lunatic. Uh, well, it's very kind of you to say, I'll clip that bit out and uh, to just use that as my ringtone now. Which means, <laughs> but I figured out what would be hilariously funny. I'll take it, I'm clipping that rather than you're clipping you, you, it. Whatever works. <laughs> I've figured out what Steve-O, would be really if you're funny. listening, clip it for Sush. Yes, mate. Um, <laughs> a watch along with my wife. Because as the game's going on, the stuff, like imagine someone landed from Mars, didn't know anything about football and was giving commentary as things were going along. So there was a moment in the first half, halfway through, where Sacco had the ball and um, I think a, a heavy challenge came in from a Dane player. It wasn't a foul, but it was just a tough challenge. And she's, she's losing it. She's like, he's jumping on his back. You can't pick, give it, make him give you a piggyback. I was like, hang on. No, no, no. It's fine, love. It's not a foul. She goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But look, we got the corner. So obviously it was a foul. Oh. I was like, no, no. If it was a foul, we would have got a free kick. The corner's because the ball went out of pitch. She's like, oh, right. Okay. I was like, right. A watch along with you is going to be the most hilarious do, thing. Do you know what the one I must respect my missus for is the one yeah. where she says, you fucking idiots. The, when it goes for a corner, oh yeah, corner, corner. 
never fucking score from them. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a moment last night where I did exactly that. I was like, corner, corner. And I could hear her going, you ain't fucking scoring nothing. <laughs> and as soon as it, it was cleared at the near post, I was like, yeah, yeah she's fucking right again. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she she's just about the most biased um, fan. And like, everything that Denmark did yesterday was a foul, like murder on the pitch, and England can do no wrong. Did she think it was a penalty? Uh, yeah, yeah, 100%. of course, <laughs> of course, she would have given both those Danes a red card, two of them a red card for one penalty. Hilarious stuff yesterday, especially when she thought the corner had been given because Sacco had been fouled. I was like, this, love yeah. it. But I have to watch the game with them because uh, it, it'll be one of those, it's one of those moments where I think it could get the kids really into football kind of thing. Um, I'm also looking forward to, this is completely off topic, West Ham's first game of the season is a Monday night game, so night football. Ah, yes. And the kids True. have never been to night football. Um, and it's in the summer holidays because August, right? So school holidays. So I'm like, boys, you can stay up late, no problem at all, and we'll be going down to West Ham uh, for a night game. So I'm looking forward to that because it's a very different atmosphere at night games um, in the summer. So, yeah, going to watch it with the fam. You kind of sum up a good point, though, in terms of, and we had, many of us had this experience in Euro 96, now, it was lovely being, many of us might have seen the tweet I spent last yeah, night yeah. Uh, with my dad and stuff. And you, if you lit read what my dad says, I, I didn't realise it till I, I saw it uh, when I looked at it this morning. My dad mouths, we've done it. Yeah. And it, it is that bringing friends, family together and that kind of thing, especially after what all of us have gone through over the last 18 months. And what a brilliant tournament this has been just generally in terms of football quality and to go back to the point at the start like Denmark have been a huge part of this tournament massive part of it massive part of the story um, where does Southgate rate uh, in the list of all time great English managers that's coming in from Benny Blanco well, I guess the answer will be if he wins on Sunday behind Sir Alf Ramsey mm. for, definitely from a success point of view but I think he's up there for so many more reasons um, you, you and me would well, I actually chose West Ham as a football club to support because I didn't have any influence Weirdo. from anyone else. You didn't really get a choice uh, because obviously you were influenced by your, your parents and you are going to support Spurs. But I would say that for a lot of people, your club is a choice. Your country is not a choice. So with Unfortun your country, unfortunately. <laughs> you, it, your mentality and mindset of what you expect is slightly different perhaps. And... Um, Maybe less people spend the, the money you spend with your club is much more of an investment. So, being proud of the with everything about them because they represent the country and who we are is a big part of it. So I want them to behave with dignity and respect and build pride and stuff. And and he's done a lot of those things better than other people have. It remind like Sir Bobby Robson was one of those people that I felt made me proud to be English. And, and Gareth makes me proud to be English. Some of the other managers over time, I haven't felt that way. Terry Venables is an example. He's a geezer and he's all right. I watched a brilliant documentary he, on Terry not, Venables the other day. I, I don't think he makes me proud to be English, if you know what I mean. I, I'm not, no, I don't mean to be disrespectful. Oh, he did for me. English, but you knew he was on the side. <laughs> Yeah, but you knew he was doing bits on the side yeah. of the hotel, didn't you? So, so uh, Southgate's up there. Yeah, I think just behind Sir, Sir Alf, uh, and especially if he brings that trophy home. I was, weekend. I was thinking yesterday actually when I was travelling out um, that one of the the major successes of England in this tournament, and I don't buy fucking newspapers anymore. Uh, do you know what? We should, oh, for the benefit of YouTubers, should we get newspapers and put them on a the table in the morning? Do you know what? If we win Sunday, we'll do that. All the yes. all the fucking back pages lined up on the table yes. Monday morning. Yeah. But I don't buy papers anymore, but I was thinking there has been no scandal anyone associated with England throughout this tournament unless I've missed it somewhere. It's normally something, at least, ah, uh, he was off having an affair in the fucking hotel room or whatever. And a lot of that might be down to that COVID ago, and they're mate, restricted and, and whatnot. And, uh, Greenwood Foden and, and Greenwood in honest, Iceland. They're 17 and 19 years old, mate. What were we doing at 17? But none of them, are, none of them have fucked no. up during this, have they? No, so no, no. There's, there's just no negative publicity around this England team. And we've kind of said it even like pre-tournament. These This group of players are so likeable, all of them, you know, getting in the pub last night all of us screaming screaming like go on Bakaya I was with four other Tottenham fans right Mason Mount is just literally Mace now you know I love all of these players I mean I'll fucking hate Saka again come August but want to get behind all of them got such a positive feeling for them whereas we kind of mm. said that that golden generation team 
most of us didn't although they were great most of us didn't like them they weren't likable people this group of lads are yeah I've, uh, I'd be really interested uh, do jump in the comments uh, and on Twitter as a neutral um, non-English fan I think a lot of neutrals are giving a shit for diving at the moment but taking that aside I'm sick you look of at the, fucking hearing about he yeah, dived yeah, get over it yeah what, what do you feel about the England, English players in terms of do you think they're a good representation of the country but that's that's uh, a conversation to be had right tomorrow what are we doing previewing the game we'll preview the game for Sunday in a, a bit in, of fantasy. In, in a bit more we'll talk about what we're going to do for fantasy I think we should pick kind of highlights of the tournament a, a team of the tournament goals assists uh, best made. best goal which if England Schick. if England has scored here yeah, Patrick Schick it was Schick, wasn't it? Yeah. If England scored in the 117th minute last night, would have been an England goal. But no, yeah, Patrick Schick, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Assist at uh, the tournament. We'll talk about Mailers, some... right foot outside of the boot. Oh, I don't know, I might have to come back to that. Yeah. We've, we've, got, we've got a bit of thinking and digging I've, to I do. I think we'll have an interesting discussion about team of the tournament and stuff tomorrow. For sure. Might even pick a combined England-Italy 11. That, but, that will cause some fucking rage. Yes. Uh, and then next week of course on Monday you will get a full reaction to the final Um, depending on if England win or lose depends on what time of day it might come out just give us the morning to keep drinking (laughs) I was going to say keep drinking mate. we'll also detail I can't remember it all at the moment because I'm still slightly hungover but we'll detail tomorrow all the the plans uh, that we're doing content wise up to the new season next week we've got which starts with takeover week uh, from Tuesday to Friday next week we'll talk about that tomorrow indeed there's a lot of stuff coming your way make sure you're subscribed wherever you are uh, listening to the podcast Apple uh, iTunes SoundCloud Stitcher Spotify whatever it may be if there's a platform that you listen on and you want to leave us a little review i won't say no because uh, it does help the algorithm and get our voices in we more never ears. ask for reviews no we don't really but i listen to our, our good friends tom um and uh, uh stag uh, at uh, wgta asking for a review over there so i'm gonna ask for a review good or bad but preferably good please don't forget, date for your diary, 24th July. Boris says it's all right for us to hold hands, lick each other's faces, and whatever else we want to do at the meet-up in London. <laughs> Please don't come and lick anyone's faces. Holding hands and licking faces is optional, not mandatory, but uh, the, the meet-up's going ahead. It's going to be really good fun, especially if, if we can bring our trophy and it's like a celebration of that. You bring too. in the trophy to the venue. I'll bring a cardboard cut out of it for sure. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's that's coming as well. 24th of July, the editor's tap in London. We know plenty that are already uh, making their way down. Um, but let's get Sunday out of the way and we'll talk more about that. Let's get Sunday out week. of the way. Enjoy last night safely and responsibly, but enjoy it because it doesn't happen often. Stay safe wherever you are. We'll be back at you tomorrow. Ciao for now. Thanks, Come everyone. On be nice to each other. Cue music, please, man, child.